Hi and welcome. I'm John and this is Unique Wargaming. Guys, welcome back. For everyone that's new, this is the Monday painting video. <laughs> What's the Monday painting video? What's it all about? Well, the Monday painting video is essentially a painting video, but the model or models in question are voted on by you guys, my viewers, from last week's Weekly Wednesday, which is a weekly Q&A. In that video, I show you a host of models and you guys vote on you with paint for this Monday's painting video. In the event of a tie, I do a dice roll. For all my regulars here, guys, I feel love. Thank you very much. I'll see you in a minute. Right, so this handsome chap won the vote for today. Now, this is an old Warhammer, I think it's a yeah, it's a fine cast. It does fine cast by the way it's has a little slot base in there and the weight of it. I can't remember what this guy's called. It's an orc war boss. I think it's a uh, black orc war boss. Is it face beater? I think his name is something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. All I've done is um, still these and grab the grab on the base, and he already has a dark angel green on his skin. Now this is a very interesting model. This is a prime example of old fantasy where there's a model and there's so much detail on the model that doesn't necessarily need to be there. Yeah, he is fine cast. I can feel how flexible that, that axe is. Now luckily this guy has a lot of clad armour. Well, he's clad in a lot of armour, shall I say. But there is little details on, on his chest piece there and a nice little skull on his dagger. So the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to start with some lead belcher and I'm going to get that brush there ready I'm actually going to take lead belcher a piece of tissue and I'm going to put some on the brush put some on the tissue and just start dry brushing the armor that's not a big major step but it will start breaking up the armor for me. And also, I'll show you this bit here. Well, he has chainmail on him. As I'm brushing down, the chainmail is really going to pop with the black undercut underneath. There's chainmail to the side here as well. Let's get this bit. That really pops off now. So I'm going to crack on and do the rest of his armor. Because he's literally clad in armor, everybody's bits of skin hanging out. And it looks like I've missed a little bit of skin muscle there. And here we are. Nice little bit of silver on the back, looking good. Next, I'm going to come in with some screaming skull. And I'm just going to pick out the skull on the hilt of his uh, sword. Or his dagger, should I say. The skull just that's going to break up the model very well. Next, I'm going to come in with some corn red. Don't need a lot of this, just need a little bit. I'm going to paint the symbol on his chest piece there again that's just a little detail is breaking up the rest of that model next I'm going to come in with this paint goblin green it's a very very old paint i don't know what the equivalent of it is now but i'm going to come in i've watered it down there to water down to get it off the uh out of the pot because it's that old i'm going to get all of his skin but i'm not going to cover every single millimeter of the skin just get as much as i can
and the bits that I missed, like this bit here, it's going to come in and get that as well. So give it a once over, make sure I've got all the skin because I think some of his head looks a bit, a bit wanting there. And so I've also got his tongue and there's a little bit of gum, a bit of skin missing on his face there. So I've painted that a little bit red. Now I'm going to come in with some Buckman's Glow. And what I'm going to do with this amazing colour, pull down a little bit more. There's a bit of a Bretonian face here, so I'm going to just come in and just give that a quick wash over with the Bugman's Glow. Right, next I'm going to, I'm going to come in with some uh, Troll Slayer Orange. This is, there's two parts of this I'm going to do Troll Star Orange. The first part, there's a little plumage coming off of him here. So I'm going to get that with Troll Star Orange. This is probably going to take two thin coats, because Troll Star Orange is a layer of paint. So it will go and brighten dot itself down. But that's just going to really break up that part of the model. And the other bit I'm going to do... I'm going to come in and just get this, this uh, chest piece. I'm not getting the whole thing. I'm just getting a bit of it, so the red's still coming through. So I'm going to go off camera and do the rest of the plumage. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come with some nano oil shade. And I'm going to paint down all of the... Uh, sorry, I, I did... Um, Screw go on his teeth as well, just to pick them out a little bit. I'm going to come with none oil. I'm going to wash all the plate armor down, the axe head, all of these gloves, all of this plate armor, just get it all washed down. So it's coming along nicely. Whilst that shade's still drying, I'm going to come in with some Cadian Flesh Tone. And I'm going to really water this down. Really, really water it down. I'm going to do this Cadian Flesh Tone. Really water it down as so I bring it in. And I start slapping it on the face here of the Bretonian dead in his arms. His hand, shall I say? Now I'm going to come in with some Attribute Rama. This is for the Bretonian's helmet. It's just amazing heraldry on the helmets, they always do. He missed his thumb there. Doing this heraldry, uh, the retribute armor, it's going to really break the model up a bit, even, even more. There's one very key thing in the models uh, in armor like this: you need to break it up as much as you can. Same as when you're painting Necrons, because all metallic. You need uh, well, I use metallic paints, but I try and use different. Uh, types of metallic paints, different shades, to really try and break it up so they all stand out nicely. Well, I'm 
what you're going to do is come back to the lead belcher get his thumb that I missed That looks like I missed that side of the hand as well. There we go. I hate it when the camera doesn't focus on it. So now what I'm going to do... Hmm. I think I need some leather for that strip on there. Right, so kind of a little bit of one oxide. And what I'm going to do with this is get the hilt, the handle of the sword. There's so many pouches I see. Yeah, there's a pouch here. A little pouch there again that just breaks up that part of the model. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in with a little bit of moot green. No, I'm not. No, I'm not going to use moot green, sorry. No, I'm not. I'm going to take some of the goblin green and mix it with a bit of white scars. And what I'm going to do with that nice green now is come in and just get like raised highlighted areas. That's really going to stand out even more. And you could probably use Mick Green if you wanted to, but I just, I think maybe it's a bit too bright for what I want. It's like this razor is a muscle. So the face is really a focal point of this model. So getting the face looking good is very key. I'll leave that to dry because it looks a bit, I'm looking at it on the camera, it looks a bit white, but it's nice, actually really, really nice light green. So I'm going to have to dry for a few minutes. This is, sorry, this is the paint I've just mixed with the Goblin Green White Scars. Now I'm going to come in with some Euro Yellow. I'm going to water this down, it's quite a lot, so it's almost a wash. Just water it right down. And all I want to do is bring a little bit in here, start from the middle and start pushing out. Now it is a layer paint so it goes on bright but will dull itself down. But where I've watered it down it's going to really off nicely. One thing I forgot was his, his eyes, so I've done them first really. So I'm going to take the corn red and come in and try and get his eyes without messing up the face. Yes, I messed up a little bit, I think. I think I messed up a little bit here. 
So I'll leave that to dry and then come back in with that mix of white scars and goblin green. So you've got this lovely little bit there. I'm going to come in with white scars and just paint in there with white scars. So this is going to be the quarry section. Right, so apart from fixing that little bit of face under there, that little bit of eye space that side there, this model is about ready. So what I'm going to do now, for everyone that's new, I'm going to take it beyond the battle ready standard. And what that means is there could be a wash, a highlight, and using layer paint, it could be using dry paint, using technical paint, using contrast paint, a dry brush, you know, there's so many different bits and pieces you can use. So I'm going to come in first, get some, some white scars on the brush, I'm going to give the skull a quick once over so that makes this stand out even more. What I'm going to do now is, hmm, the shade's pretty much dry. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a piece of tissue, take my big brush, and then get some white scars on that on that tissue, on the brush and onto the tissue, and I'm going to dry brush these armor panels. But I want to try and get the edges. And what this is, what this is going to do is give it like a worn metal look. I'm not going to do all of it on camera, I'll do a bit of it and then go off and do the rest. So yeah, that's how the armor looks. Nice and worn. Now I did give the face a little bit of a tidy up. Now I'm going to come in with so I'm going to do next white scars again, but this time I'm just going to pick out the ends of the teeth just to make them stand out even more. Absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to give the skull another little bit of a brush with the white skull just to make it stand up, pop out even more. Now there is two shields on his base, so with those, I'm just going to whack some, some of the um, lead belt over the top. Now, I'm going to come in with some, if I can see it, this one, there we go, Blood for the Blood God Technical Paint. Very, very simple step this is. And a bit under there I painted white, and now I'm just going to slap the blood onto it. Slap it up on the face a little bit. Slap it on the wrist a little bit here. Let's give me that nice bloody look. I might even just drop a little bit on the axe here. Again, that just breaks the axe up a little bit. And there we have it. Very easy, very nice. Very happy with this guy. 
If you're seeing this for the first time, guys, hit the subscribe button because it costs you absolutely nothing. Turn your notifications on so you don't miss anything. Everyone smash the thumbs up button so that triggers YouTube to this video more and more people. It makes this amazing community of you guys grow even more. I might, with the shield, chuck some Agrax Earthshade or something onto it just to dull them down a little bit. But apart from that, this guy is done. I don't think the camera's doing the, the skin any justice. It's looking very white on the camera, but it's actually yellowy green. Maybe it's just a lighting. Anyway, I'm very happy with this guy. Any comments or anything, chuck them below as always, guys. A massive thank you to everyone who voted. Um, if you vote for something it didn't win, don't panic, guys, because everything needs to be painted. And just to give you a little um, Brucey bonus, for those of you who've watched the way to the end, this is the next Let's Build video. Okay. I was hoping to have it finished yesterday, but I didn't have time. My camera came, pinged up 15% batteries. Oh, my goodness me. There's still a handful of guys left to do, but that should be up this week. So there's a battle tomorrow, so probably that'll probably be up Thursday, hopefully. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hit the buttons for me. Thank you to everyone who voted. Until next time, take it easy.